Well, people right to the red stars is pre-game press conference. We have Elia <laughs> Samir and Shayna Matthews here with us today. Um, coach will be joining us right afterwards. So let's get started. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please use the raise your hand function and I'll use it to call on you. Um, since Taylor's all the way out in the West Coast. Oh, sorry, Sandra, go ahead. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for, for the time. I guess uh, for, for both of you to just um, start out, um, uh, Shayna, if, if you could take the lead on this one, just sort of getting back with the team uh, post-World Cup getting reintegrated into to trainings and and club schedule how's it uh, been with your return um it's definitely summer here <laughs> <laughs> um so the first thing was just getting used to the heat again in the trainings and um going to north carolina and having that be my first game uh back it was definitely hot <laughs> so <when it> comes, <laughs> you know the team is always warm welcomes and everybody's happy um that we we have our entire team back again and everybody's been just like working really hard in training so it's been good and uh for you Alyssa. Yeah, it's been great. I think, um, you know, it took the the week to get back to get kind of readjusted time wise and get let my body get back. Um, but it's been good to be back in with the team, get back in with the group. Um, they obviously were working hard while we were gone and um, to kind of, you know, kind of try to build from that momentum that they were that they were, um, you know, continuing to grow. Um, so it's been good to get back in with the group. Yeah, um, big headline coming out of yesterday, uh, Julie Ertz announcing her retirement. Um, I just wanted to ask you, Alyssa, just some of your thoughts after having been a teammate of hers for so long, both for club and for country. Yeah, you know, I've shared the field with Julie for the last 10 years. Um, I think she's, you know, an incredible player. She's left her mark on on the game for sure. And she's done a lot for um, the Red Stars and her time here. You know, I think six, seven years that she was with Chicago. Um, obviously her national team resume speaks for itself. Um, and, you know, she's proud to have shared the field with her. She's an incredible player, incredible person. And I wish her the best in, you know, this exciting new phase of, of her life, you know, with, with her husband and her son and, um, getting some family time. And, you know, I'm, I think she's ready for it and I'm excited for her to see kind of get into that next phase. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I saw the news drop, I sort of thought back to a lot of the different rosters that she's been on for club. And I couldn't help think about that 2019 roster. It was kind of like the last full season, just because then the pandemic hit and then obviously the injury and, and maternity leave have changed some things. But in, in terms of um, maybe those club years that stand out more than others, is it that something more special about that 2019 team for, for you at all? Yeah, I think that team was definitely special. Um, that was, you know, we obviously made a good run at it and ended up in the final. Um, so I think, you know, having having Julie, having Sam, you know, Morgan, Vanessa, Tierna's first year, I think, like, I mean, that was a, an incredible team. It was a great year for us. Um, and she was a big part of that. Um, but yeah, I think that was, that. yeah, I think you're right. That was probably the last, last season that we had in full, but that was a good one. Um, and Shana, for you, I, I just recalled um, when Julie Ertz was making her way back, she mentioned you specifically as someone that um, she tried to look to as an example or speak to in terms of um, coming back to and return to play from from motherhood. If, if there was anything that you'd like to, to add on uh, her retirement, I'd like to give you the opportunity. Yeah, um, Julie is somebody I've always admired on, on the field and I've really had um I've been lucky to have an opportunity to get to know her off the field a lot through our husbands being teammates and just um, spending some, you know, off seasons actually together and training and different things like that. So I've always looked up to her. And um, when she had her first child, it was uh, nice to be able to kind of like have that experience to help her because I knew she was a world-class athlete. Um, I knew it would be possible for her to come back. And so I'm really excited for her, you know, future endeavors. She's an amazing person, obviously, her resume speaks for itself on the field and um, I think she's just getting started so I'm looking forward to see what she what she has going next awesome thank you both for your time appreciate it good luck this weekend thank you thank you thanks Sandra all right now we'll go to Taylor hi um thanks for chatting with us today um I know you guys kind of went straight from North Carolina up to DC um as far as trying to stay in the same time zone, kind of how has it been pra at practice this week, kind of preparing for the spirit game? Uh, it's been good. I mean, we're just, you know, town, town together the week of the team, um, you know, keeping the same schedule as we would have back home, um, the consistency of that. And obviously it's going to be, 
um, you know, a good game on the weekend. And DC is a good team, um, a lot of world class players. And, you know, for us, it's just kind of fine tuning some of those details in preparation for, uh, you know, what to expect from them this weekend. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Taylor. Uh, Leslie, go ahead. <laughs> Leslie, you might still be muted. Or not. Uh, Leslie, if you're talking, we can't hear you. If you want to type your question in the chat, we could read it too. Um, in the meantime, let's go to Joe. Hey, y'all. Thanks for the time. Really do appreciate it. Uh, Shana, if I may start with you, uh, Alyssa, you said something uh, on the podcast that came out yesterday uh, that I was very thrown off by that I'm curious how Shana was uh, with the time adjustments, getting up at 2.30 in the morning and just saying, I'm going to start my day. Uh, Shana, I'm curious if you had that uh, similar type of experience coming back from Australia and New Zealand. Well, I don't know if it was similar because my kids had no idea that I had just come back from Australia. So I got back thrown straight into the fire, back into the regular routine of things to spend time with my my family. So my son was coming in the room at 5.50 in the morning. Um, I was watching all the games still. So I was getting up to watch them or just staying up really because I hadn't adjusted. So I think I just had a little bit of lack of sleep that week. And once I had finally went to sleep back in Chicago and um, being back in with the team, it was a little bit easier to adjust because I'm sleeping long periods of time. And uh, Alyssa, I'm going to ask you a similar question afterwards, but Shane, I'm curious if you were able to follow along with the team while you were gone, uh, what you saw, there were some positive performances, uh, some less so, but I'm curious uh, how you took in a couple things over uh, the time you were gone. Um, so we get uh, the film, the team sends like the film. So I was able to watch like a lot of the film and kind of see the feedback that was put into groups and stuff. But to watch them live was like really difficult with the time change. Um, I think that um, one of my favorite performances was obviously Casey's uh, three assists. I mean, that's insane to do in an NWSL game, and she made it look so easy. Um, so just building off that momentum, what kind of, I think, confidence that instilled in the team. And I think when we got back, like, we just saw that that's where, you know, we need to kind of, like, also just try to bring that to because it was already, you know, starting in the team. So. Well, thank you. Uh, Alyssa, we've had uh, two players named a best 11 over the two months. Uh, obviously, Casey's performances were fabulous, but also uh, your goalie mate, uh, Emily Boyd, had three shutouts and four starts. Uh, we didn't get really a chance to ask you beforehand, but I assume there wasn't many surprises with her performances. And uh, I'm curious how you thought of uh, her performances as well. Yeah, I mean, I think she played great. She had a great month, um, a lot of solid games. She's obviously been with the team now for six years. So I think six years, five, six years. So um, no, not surprised um, to see to see that performance and the way um, she played. Um, and I think you saw, you know, in that month, uh, you know, she stepped up and other players around the team also stepped up and they put together, um, you know, great team performance over the time. And, and obviously Casey and Emily were a big part of that. And if I may ask you one more about another one of your fellow goalies, Mackenzie Wood getting loaned out. I'm curious if you guys have any communication with her, uh, any messages to her, as uh, Chris told us last week. The goal is for her to get time so she can come back and play next year and get some real uh, minutes in NWSL. Yeah, I think, for, I mean, I'm a huge advocate, especially with young goalkeepers, to go overseas and get to play and have that. You can only you need to gain experience through playing. Like there's only so much you can train you, you know, get decision-making and everything else. And, you know, I think Mackenzie has grown a lot this season. I think she's improved tremendously since she got here and she's worked hard. She's, you know, done everything she's been asked to do. And I think this is the, re the reward of that. Um, so I hope that she's able to get over there and touch base with her before she left and just wish her luck and let her, you know, if she needs anything to reach out. But, you know, I think I'm excited for her and the opportunity as with any young player and specifically young goalkeepers to be able to have the opportunity to go overseas and, and get games and she's actually teammates with um one of my teammates um from jamaica so she immediately texted me when she found out that they were going to be teammates and i'm like oh you'll you'll love each other it's it's a <laughs> here already in the back so well i'm hoping those group chats are wonderful 
Uh, thank you both for the time. Appreciate it. And good luck this weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Uh, Leslie, let's try one more time. All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Go ahead. Hooray. Sorry about that. Um, with the draw last weekend, you bumped North Carolina out of first place. Uh, how how do you see this team's role the rest of the season as you play a bunch of playoff contenders? Uh, I think for us, it's, the focus is on us. And truthfully, as it has been kind of all season on how we can grow as a team, how we can get the best performance out of ourselves each weekend, um, where we need to improve, where we're doing well that we can continue to build on. And I think for us, it's just continuing to build and to grow um, as a group, as a team. And, you know, that's whatever. We're going to play a lot of good opponents as we have all season long. Um, but, you know, their playoff standing or not playoff standing doesn't make a difference one way or the other for us. It's our focus is coming in and having a, a complete performance each weekend and taking it one game at a time. Of course. Um you, uh, Alyssa, you spoke a bit about uh, the World Cup being a galvanizing uh, experience for the team. Um, would you say you're able to draw some parallels with uh, the current everything happening in Chicago? Sorry, can you? I don't think I understand your question. Sorry, um, uh, you uh, described on the the podcast uh, snacks last night about uh, the U.S.'s uh, experience in at the World Cup as kind of a galvanizing experience. W would you say the the team here in Chicago is is having a similar experience with with all of the everything happening from the front office and the oh. new <laughs> owners, all of the all of the that everything? Sorry, I wasn't specific. Okay. <laughs> um, you mean just like the yeah? Okay. Um, yeah, I think obviously that's that that has to bring a group together. There's a lot of unknowns going on around us as there has been since last October. So I think, you know, it's important for the group to stick together and and kind of rely on each other through all of that. And I think anytime there's that inner or outside turmoil, um, those are opportunities to to galvanize and bring a group together. Great. Um, if you would indulge me one more, uh, could we expect to see you step up uh, the penalty spot the rest of the way? <laughs> <laughs> Not in any sort of live game, I'm sure. I think that's <laughs> usually probably a bit disrespectful to the opponent and to the other 10 players on our field um, to do it in a live match. Obviously, shootouts are a little bit different, but uh, but no, I'll stick to I'll stick to the goal. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Leslie. Any last questions for either Alyssa or Shana? Looks like enough. All right, thank you, everybody. I'll have Chris up shortly. All right, we're both we're back with Coach Petroselli. Uh, again, if you have a question, please use the raise your hand function, and I'll use it to call on you. Anybody want to kick us off? Uh, Joe, go ahead. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Good, thanks. Uh, so if I may start, uh, can we start with the Tierna update <laughs> to get that out of the way? Fully in training, good to go. Perfect. Uh, and just in terms of this match going against a team, uh, it's one one the last time y'all went against them. I'm curious how the preparation's been this week, uh, given that it was another one of those games where just a penalty and you guys could have had the three points the last time. Yeah, I mean, I think, well, for the most part, they dominated the game the last time we played. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a talented roster uh, that they have and a really explosive front group. Mm -hmm. uh, the addition of the French player, I think, makes them even more explosive. Um, so, you know, we've been we've been trying to work sort of on two ends of the field, you know, in the penalty boxes on both end, ends of the field and trying to, to control their front players and also trying to be a little bit more dynamic uh, when we go forward. And in terms of that uh, dynamic going forward, is that something where maybe we see the Tatum also in the starting lineup, or is that kind of uh, potentially? I'm just thinking of with Tierna coming back, what we're thinking yeah. of. With yeah, the back. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Uh, it's I think something I've been uh, mulling over all week, you know, and and haven't come to a conclusion yet as to exactly what we're going to do. But I do think that. Um, Tatum's uh, speed more on the defending side than the attacking side, I think is, uh, would be important for us. 
Wonderful. And if I may, uh, do you mind if I ask you a question? I don't know if you've seen the SMU news today. But, I did. Uh, see it. I did uh, see it. Can I ask you? I'm I curious. Expect, I didn't expect a question about it, but I did see it. Yeah, um, no, I'm curious. It's yeah. a. It's now yeah. going to be. They're the only team in Texas now. Going to have to travel to California and up and down the Atlantic coast. I'm just curious. You've you've seen the yeah. operations. You know how these things work. I'm curious how it's going to be for. I think it's great. It's great for SMU. It's a big, huge step and something that they've wanted for a long time. And you know, they they kind of got closed out in the last round of realignment and and uh and i think it was hard um you know just living it it was hard you know recruiting against the power five not having the power five moniker and um i think it will help their recruiting um i think yes the travel will be extremely difficult but knowing what they've been through i think they would they obviously would trade that you know, for the chance to get in to the group, uh, the Power Five group. So I think it's a wonderful day for them. That's great. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Uh, good luck on Sunday. Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, Taylor, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, thanks for chatting with us today. Um, I was just wondering kind of what challenges do you expect kind of from that um, that front attack of Washington Uh this weekend and kind of yeah without telling me as much as you can tell me kind of what are the plans to contain i think trinity rodman up there is is pretty dangerous well they're all pretty dangerous you know um and and trinity probably stands out the most of uh, uh of the attacking players but they have a lot of good ones and you know i think we have to be aware of all of them we got to make sure that um uh we're very aware on the counter because they counter fast and uh, they got, you know, lightning pace on, uh, you know, in a number of different areas. They got creativity in in Sanchez coming out of the midfield. They've got, you know, a good a good target player in in Hatch who can score any moment. Um, and, and and I am impressed with this French player as well. Um, so you know, I think we got to be pretty got to be careful when we have the ball, um, in that we don't, you know, give it away and put them in in good situations and. And then we we got to be really sharp and organized and and a little more physical, I think, than we've been defensively. And then um, one other thing, slightly off topic. Um, we all know that Mal Pugh got injured back in April. Um, she never did receive the SEI designation. Do you expect her at this point to return to play before the end of regular season? Um. Uh, you know, uh, we've never put a timeline on Mal, and actually we still haven't discussed the timeline with her. Obviously, we're running out of games here, and, uh, you know, I am I'm, I'm, I don't know that, that I'm the right person to ask on this because I don't know the exact, you know, uh, protocol of a rehab. I know she's, at this point, she's you know, like running on a, one of those anti-gravity machines. Um, she's not running on ground yet. Um, so it may be a reach for her to be back in time, but, uh, but again, I, I'm not ready to put a, put a timeline on that. And, um, you know, we'll see where we go. I mean, I think probably the next two or three weeks will give us a, a real indication of, of where Mal will be at. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Taylor. Any other questions for coach? Looks like a no. All right. Thank you, everybody. And I'll have a recording out shortly.